Lisa, our sustainability director. Please take your seats. The policies. We're going to start with the four of us. And then the other will come. Karin, you may sit here, please. Wonderful. Congrats. Nice to meet you, Karin. Bom, pessoal, é, é, então assim, resgatando um pouco que a gente começou a conversar. Um, we start. Ah, Eduardo, and we, it's an honor to us to share with you about the ideas and contributions of these social organizations that are representing so well this participation and the synergy between the society, organized groups, and the public administration is on several levels. We have partners here who are working with public policies at state and federal levels, municipal levels as well. And we have a lot of contributions. Today we are at COP. This is the COP, this is COP 27, and it's the first time that the Amazon has its own space to speak. It's the first time that the nine subnational them uh, below the poverty line. We have many challenges, many opportunities. There's room for us to debate as a biome and as a group. And thanks to your support. Von Bium is not on the list, but it's a great partner as well. We have other partners speaking today, but we are here today thanks to this support, this organization and we have a lot of synergies and we are going to discuss about this topic today. We just had a panel with the Eastern Amazon Fund and they always talk about the challenges. We seek that at different COPs, but how to have concrete actions with real results? How can I get that to the ground, to the population living there? And I'd like to start with Marcelo Furtado from the Coalition Brazil Climate, Forests and Agriculture. Thank you, Marcelo. I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to tell you that it's the second time, because the first time was at Brazil Hub when we had a, a room just for the Amazon governance. Because we always thought that the legal Amazon consortium was a very important actor to execute the transformation that today is the challenge of raising funds for this economy that is uh, aiming at this standing forest. And what is the, the role of civil society? From the standpoint of the Brazil coalition and we have climate, forest and agriculture, and you are all members of this coalition, and the first Emerging point is that it's a coalition with civil society, academia, private sector, all together discussing and making 
things happen, creating concrete proposals for the implementation and transformation of Brazil in this shared vision. I wanted to bring this topic because uh, finances in Brazil and in the world. And this year vision that we have in the coalition has, is that we are dividing the, the challenge in three pillars. One pillar is to finish deforestation and at the other hand, valuing the standing forest. And the second pillar has to do in, to producing food to Brazil and generating jobs and income. So these three elements united in public policies, which are well chosen, could be the driver for an investment environment that will enable the combination of public policies with investments so that we can enhance all this. Create this favorable environment for investments. And first of all, we must listen. Because if you're going to engage all these stakeholders, we have to be at the table with the private sector, academia, social society, indigenous people, Quilombola people, that is the black traditional community. So we shouldn't be at the table just to listen and, and change the focus. We have to be at the table to negotiate. And we are going to find 70 to 60% of conversions. And it's possible that we can find 30, 40% of uh, needs for dialogue because each sector has its own. And in this environment, environment in the coalition, we are trying to promote different documents when we are going to present the visions, opportunities, and proposals. Once we were able to put the right people uh, at the table to get uh, the agreements and create this favorable environment, before we start looking for funds, we must ask ourselves, how can we govern that? Because we're going to need indicators that show that that re really happened. So we must have monitoring, reports, checkings, and that must be transparent. That must be available for air anyone. We should do that in a way that we are precise so that uh, the numbers are reliable. And region. And there's another important effect that is the community itself, the community of investors and the, the finance community. When you have this common ground, you have this robust governance and you have the indicators, we become much more interesting to the investments we are seeking. And I'm going to wrap up to talk about the types of investments. In Brazil and in the world, we every time we want money for something, we say the government should invest. But the reality is that the most part of the government is broken. And it's broken because we had two years of COVID and many other reasons. But the reality is that if you're going to wait for public resources to our logics and consider that maybe the role of the public uh, resource is to foster the private investment. And why is that? I'm going to give you an example. If we observe the markets, 
I'm going to take as an, ex as an example the natural market. The greatest economy in the world is the, the US uh, eco economy and then Chinese economy. And the third economy in the world that is uh, moving $8.3 trillion per year is the nature market. Within this nature market, we have different things. And one market alone is worth $4 trillion per year. Do you know which market this is? It's the agriculture. Is this market generating positive externalities for the climate, for the nature, for equity? I don't think so. So the questions we should ask is, couldn't we influence this market so that it delivers climate resilience, a positive system for nature, and generate equity how can we do that and i wonder if this market that is benefited by nature and ecosystem and earth and water that exist in the amazon shouldn't they pay for that so when we think about finance the food for thought that i want to bring is that we should markets that's okay but these markets are growing are starting now and we have giant markets that have been around for 300 years and we are ignoring them so the when we think about money we should should think about great package of resources that are moving a great amount of resources and we should think about them and the last point that I promised that I'm going to be brief is the Costa Rica example, that is the difference between an electoral cycle and the climate cycles of the nature and social investment. We have a tradition that is not Brazilian only, but it's very common in Brazil, that the project Another idea comes and there's no continuity. And sometimes we change the name and go on. That's not so bad, but in other opportunities, that doesn't even happen. They simply destroy the projects. In Costa Rica, they started with this project for payment of environmental services, taxing gasoline and the use of water. And with that, Costa Rica was able to finance this uh, restoring project that is an example for the world. But how come this project is alive for 20 years if the administration has changed for four or, or five times? And the reason why is that the society of the country has embraced that, that project. And I wanted to end by saying that the challenge that we have concerning the Amazon of governments, different lines of, go of government. But what matters is that all administrations receive the same message from society that society wants this uh, government program to generate positive externalities concerning the climate, con concerning the nature, with equity, generating jobs and income, food, main maintaining the forest standing, generating job and opportunities to all, the society wants that to go on. And when we talk about nature, you, we usually say, Let's, it's easier to invest in carbon, but when you have nature, it's complicated. We don't have data, it's diff difficult to measure. And this is not true, this is a fake narrative. The, data's, the data is there, the technology is there, we're able
It was so complicated that they had to create a film to explain what it was. Everybody bought that. Everybody was cre- was screwed at the end, but the, everybody bought. And you have this uh, hyper trading. You invest in microseconds. You don't even know which kind of platform uh, exists for that. And people are investing. But now, if you if you talk about bioeconomy, people say, "Ah, oh, it's very complicated. It's systemic. You don't understand." So our role as a society is to change this narrative. Our role is that somehow to uh, challenge the financial sector so that uh, they can inv- invent bright products that uh, like they, they create a complicated products the climate and we have other countries in the amazon basin and we shouldn't consider that as a brazilian product but a product from the amazon region because the challenges are so common between all the the, the countries and it's it's not okay to to save the brazilian amazon and leave the the other amazon behind this is a challenge we should look to the biome as a whole and other countries say they say uh, Uh, Colombian Amazon, Peruvian Amazon, and we only say uh, the Amazon because it's so big that we think we are the only one, but it's not true. From the financial standpoint, it's very important that we are humble enough and have the ambition and generosity and the creativity to bring the things that are available to us to make this transformation. the Brazilian coalition to see that we have 300 organizations from these three sectors, so civil society, academia, private sector, and they all come. We can do, we can bring the solutions, and what is lacking is to mix the political will of the governments with the, the goodwill of the Brazilian society to work together and transform what we need to transform. Thank you so much. Marcel, I'd like to thank you, and I'd like to say that we we would like to reinforce these words of continuity, and we would like to invite everyone to be part of this pact. It, it's important. Fifteen years. Now we have the commitment of these governors to insert that in the new PPAs. Uh, five years ahead to curb deforestation and fires and to foster the bioeconomy. One of the problems that we've been working with some partners such as EPA and also. I would like to listen to, from Caroline, from Karen, from TNC, to to tell us how she sees her role. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the climate director of WRI Brazil. WRI Brazil is an international institution. We say it's a tank. expertise. There's climate, cities, energy. In Brazil, we work on climate, forest, and city. And it would be interesting to talk about the consortium because this climate agenda, it's a global agenda. We are here within the space but there's no 1.5 without the Amazon. It is impossible for us to maintain the 1.5 target without the pan Amazon, but there's also no Amazon without the sustainable and and 
uh, economic developments. There's no botanical garden. Uh, Amazon is no botanical garden. There's people living there. There's culture. There's people. There's intelligent people. There's technologies, social technologies, and innovation technologies. There's a whole Amazon there that needs to be translated. as part of the solution, we need to create uh, dialogue channels among the global, national, subnational, and at a municipal level to explain how we are all going to work together towards this common goal of developing Brazil, developing the Amazon, but also our forests, our rivers, our cultures. I'm here mentioning the indigenous cultures that have a lot to teach us. And within this process of communication, global communication, those that are um, negotiating with the governors and the federal government, we have uh, organizations like mine that are there in several steps of this letter, and we are here to help uh, make this information circulate. I'm going to tell an anecdote that reveals a lot with Colombians. And I ask them, where is the Brazilian space? And they say it's next to us. And next to us, we have a space only about legality in the Amazon. And she showed me the name, and it was uh, Consortium Legal Amazon. And I said, the consortium is only a political snapshot of the Amazon, but we have uh, several different uh, um, climate spaces in the Amazon. And there's a funding program called climate financing. We need to start save the forests, but the money doesn't have to be only to keep the forest standing. We have to generate jobs. We have to generate sanitation for the populations that generate these forest economies. I understand that we add value with TNC and IPAN is uh, helping create a communication with the least noise that we can among the international community, the other organizations in Brazil. We need spaces like this for the communities that live in the forest to create a, a dialogue with them, to build a structure with them. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have had a very big support in the structuring of the bioeconomy program that is going to be launched here at COP. This is one of the products to be delivered, and this is one of the promises of the governors, and we count on your support. I see that these partnerships strengthen our work and strengthen this kind of initiative. Organizations called the New Economy for Amazon. And I would like to make this comment. If you are interested, you can talk to her later because she is feisty. She is doing something very nice. She is working with researchers, economists, civil societies, uh, indigenous peoples. This is going to be a very nice product. Very nice, very nice. Uh, I, what I would like to say as well is uh, to make an invitation to you. The consortium has open doors to sign terms of cooperation for an agenda, something concrete that we can work after the COP. And on the next COP, we can bring the results. Uh, this is a huge responsibility after uh, speaking after Marcelo and Carol. 
My name is Kali Oliveira. I am the director for public policies and governmental relationships of the Nature, Nature Conservancy Brazil, TNC. We have a history of work in the Amazon for 30 years. TNC is a global organization as well as WRI. We work with several agendas. And in the Amazon region, we have always dedicated our works to the perspective of respecting the DNA of the Amazon region. We respect the forest, the people who live in that region, but we also understand, as Carol said in her speech, the need to conciliate conservation. a lot in the state of Pará. We have been partners of this consortium. And since the beginning of this consortium, we have followed the trajectory of this work. But our field work has always been in the state of Pará. And you can ask me, how come have you focused on the state of Pará? Because the Amazon region has an issue. We were uh, at, in the Brazil hub listening to the former minister, Isabella, and she always says Amazon is the bridge for the Brazil, the, the global Brazil. And the point of the Amazon has always been deforestation. It has always been the big problem of the state. We have observed that if we could develop models and best practices that work there in that state, related to the use of soil, which is the main reason for this uh, disorderly use of soil. And the biggest reason why Brazil has a bad performance in terms of emissions, if we could develop an interesting model there, we would build with all of those partners a solution to be replicated in other territories. If we could solve the problem there, most of the problems in Amazon could have an effective solution. So in the sense, the climate funding is developed not only in Brazil, but globally in five great areas. One of the areas is not applicable because we also work with oceans, but it's not the case of the Amazon. Here, but uh, the first area is what we call multilateral sources of funding. In the sense, what I want to highlight to you today is the relationship between the global, the national, the subnational, and the local. There are different sources of funding. There is an ecosystem of uh, Fun funding sources, and we need to be able to use this in favor of the construction and the implementation of solutions to add to these solutions, because not all the answers are going to be in this huge investment that comes from Norway and Baza or Bampara in the case of the state investments. There's an ecosystem of funds to be explored. In the previous session, we heard about the Eastern Amazon well, and it is within this concept that I, I am describing to you. The ecosystem of different sources of resources uh, for the climate area. And uh, our second uh, area has to do with the Amazon DNA. We have the forest, but we also have the historical agricultural production in the state, not only in the state of Pará, but also in other states. And how can we work with that? At TNC, we call it the natural infrastructure. How can we develop best practices and how can we use what we call the nature-based solutions to build solutions that help 
producing more without deforesting, without in this construction of our um, our uh, organization. We have several examples of projects that we have in these nature-based solutions. We have regenerative, regenerative solutions. We have Impara as well, reforestation with cocoa. And in our reforestation with cocoa, within that context of territory where we have diversity of people and a diversity of territories within the same territory, including with the protected areas, a huge bet that we have in climate funding is what we call impact investment. That's where we have very strongly the study that W. asset. I'm talking about bioeconomy and social biodiversity. I'm talking about the economy that is carried out by the people of Amazon that historically has used the forest with a lot of wisdom. This bioeconomy is a singularity. It is within their DNA, and it may cause a very positive impact in the forest and in the social economic results that are expected. In this study that we have carried out with the support of the IDB and Natura, we have seen that the proportional income that can be even higher than livestock. We bet a lot on livestock, but we can have even greater results with the local economy. So we can use the DNA of the region. And lastly, Appropriately, the fact that we always defend the standing forest. The standing forest means carbon, and carbon to work has to have price, and that's where the carbon market comes in. We understand that if we work as a mosaic with all of those elements dialoguing among themselves, we can really bring the, a more inclusive model of development and a more effective and fast model of development because actually we know how to do it, but we have to do it faster. And doing it faster does not always mean having the money. We have to have the solutions as well. This is what I had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. leave here say, without saying that there's a very important person from the civil society that brought the topic funding to be a topic that the civil society had to embrace in the Amazon. Andre Guimarães from IPAN that is not here, so I would like to acknowledge his leadership. He ha is a brilliant mind. And he is a leadership bringing this topic to the civil society. It was a very important role. I just wanted to acknowledge him. If he were here, he would be sitting in my seat. Thank you, André. André is a great leader, really. But uh, I had to take this opportunity to invite you to expand your horizons. Possibility of an agenda that will prevent overflows, spillovers, and will facilitate funding as well. So maybe think about a partnership with the consortium, including Para. 
our brothers of Pará, and I would like to say that we are at your disposal. It's an honor to receive you, to welcome you here. I would like to thank you for being with us here and see you soon. See you soon. You help a lot, the state, so I would like to express my gratitude to the Institute that has collaborated our restless search for green economy. Monica, please feel free to share a little bit of what you were thinking for the Amazon. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Eduardo. I'm representing the Earth Innovation Institute. Despite our very humble participation, we have a long participation in the Amazon, but we also understand the importance and uh, the role of the Amazon states in this uh, global climate agenda, considering that we have one of the largest to reach a tipping point to die back of the forest, they can uh, harden the project, the, the, the topic of the climate change. We can uh, help reaching the main needs of the states, but as the first panel stated, our climate fund is for what? For what agenda? What do we need? the climate investment for. We cannot think only about uh, governmental projects of four years. We're talking about the Amazon forest. We have to generate long lasting transformations and they need to have a long term agenda. So we have tried to generate bridges between long term state We are talking about the role of the public administration, but also the role of the difference. So we need the government and the private sector. So the finance of this agenda shouldn't use only the public resources. We must attract the private sector to invest in the Amazon and generate trans uh, lasting transformations. So our role in this last year was to try and find opportunities to open up this, this carbon market so that we can have Red Plus uh, initiatives in the state of the Amazon. Not generate reductions if the 
the strategy of the states won't allow for this this uh, carbon credit generation. So we have this role of being the technical and legal assistance to understand the context of the legal framework in the state and in the in the federal uh, government, what the states can do, what is the, the institutional arrangement that will enable this finance, this partnership with the private sector. And we should observe within, how can we dialogue with different sectors? How can we maintain a government governance structure that is able to advance such an agenda that will enable the continuity of this agenda over time because the administrations are changing every four years. And it's only possible when you have a convergence of uh, future visions at the state level. You should have a state policy to design the different strategies in a participatory way where all the stakeholders can appropriate this vision to fulfill this goal with this uh, promising future for the Amazon. So our role is to bridge the gap between the finance and the private sector, but into the state as well, building bridges among different sectors so that they can actively participate in building this long-term strategy. It's very important to think about the long run and reinforce this example. The legal Amazon consortium. We want to have the strategic planning, the green integration and the the plans in the long long-term plans. I'm talking as a secretary that will have a, an administration change at the end of the year. But that's a transition that is very interesting. And we've been appropriating these clients and, and these projects that are being built uh, uh, by you. And you were great participants in the strategic planning and IPAN have, have been a, has been a great partner. So when a governor, a new governor, and this is natural, we will have new governors, new uh, presidents. When they come to discuss the biome, they have different instruments that were developed for that population. correcting the, the route and so we have a lot to, to thank you and to build together. So I'd like to give the floor to the bright mind by my side to see if he has news from IPA. So Eugenio, thank you so much for being here. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank you for uh, the invitation and, and also the trust from the, uh, from the legal Amazon consortium. And to us, it's very gratifying to be part of this story. IPA, as other organization, has a serious work. If it, if it weren't serious, it wouldn't be here talking to these partners. We've been existing for 27 years, and we were born in Santarém. two more uh, coming to the Cerrado. I won't repeat what you just said. You we think very similar about this integration and this need for financial ar arrangement to fund what the Amazon need. But I wanted to mention three points. Every time that I talk about the Amazon, I say that Brazil has two pieces in this global chess for the international market, or for the environment and the climate. These two uh, pieces are commodity with ore and, and farming, and the other is the Amazon. 
if you observe all the discussions in the international conferences and the trade agreement, and now in these relations with be the delicious food from Minas Gerais and it won't be the samba in Rio de Janeiro that's going to make the difference in the world. It's the commodities and it's the it's the Amazon. And it's the Amazon. And the Amazon is being represented by this wonderful legal Amazon consortium that is bringing integration to the Amazon. And in this process of climate funding, I wanted to look within. In what sense? It's a moment of, uh, pol of political transition, and it gives us this opportunity to strategically discuss with the new leaders from the Amazon and with the new administration with the perspective of reformulating all the economic instruments that are directed to developing the Amazon. We have the Bank of the Amazon, we have Sudan, we have the, the Amazon Fund that is going to be reestablished. Legal Amazon Consortium and this perspective to establish this re rearrangement. So, Secretary, this is food for thought. For this new period of uh, managing this consortium, this Legal Amazon Consortium, how this consortium is leading the reformulation of the arrangements so that the investments can be implemented in, in concrete actions to reduce deforestation and in the process of the economic development in the region. And so that requires the pillars that we are always discussing. Everybody knows the different challenges, uh, regulation, uh, land use, access to credit, and so on, all the conditions for a favorable environment for business. So that's what I mean by looking within. And it's not only the government, it's not only the civil society. The civil society has less resources and potential, but they but we have a lot of will, of course. We have a lot of will, we have expertise, we have science, technical support. We can contribute with that for building the solutions. But in this connection with the private market, I believe that we also have in our hands this great possibility that is strengthening all the arrangements that have been established in the international frameworks. We have been noticing different initiatives that are disconnected to the implementation arrangement, to the global strategy for implementing the Paris Agreement or the uh, or not implementing the Cancun safeguards. So how can identify how can we identify the the solution for for concrete problems? And I believe that the other partners and everyone here have have the technical skills to identify uh, what we need to build a solution so that we can have this financial solution for the Amazon. And to wrap up, I'd like to, to talk what uh, Marcelo said about André Guimarães. André Guimarães also wanted us to bring this finance, uh, climate finance for private initiatives so that we could find uh, joint solutions. It's not by separating different actors that we are going to find solutions, but integrating them. And this is the timely moment for us to do that. So this is our objective at APA, to have different stakeholders in I told him that I, I was going to talk to you about that. He's going to have a surgery. He will need to trans, transplant a, a bone marrow, but he found a compatible 
persons to help him in this transplantation, and soon he will replace me to speak and present the solutions. I told him that I was going to talk about what's happening so that you can uh, be assured that he is experiencing this planned uh, situation and everything is going to work out. So let's send good vibes to André. Thank you. So send this message to André. He can count on our praise and our good vibes from the to promote this agenda. And I've promised the support of, of the FASA leader who is part of this process. And we also have the scientific commission from the Vatican, several different forces supporting this recovery. And I'd like to give the floor to Victor so he can share how FI is approaching these different issues. And I'd like to invite you to, to listen from us tomorrow when in our AMAPA discussion, FASI is one of the partners uh, that we count on. So I'll give you the floor. Thank you so much for being with us. and provocations. The first comment is that we must understand that we are in this different siding that is this uh, subnational platform, which is the legal Amazon consortium that was consolidated in a very different scenario in Brazil, to say the least. And it's very important to have this kind of platform because it is strengthening democracy and opening spaces for new voices. We know that this administration has caused many damages and the consortium was a platform to connect the indigenous peoples, the civil society, the Colombala leadership with the governments, either municipal governments or subnational governments. So the platform was this consortium, the legal Amazon consortium that consolidated this dialogue with the public power. And the second, Seventh year, we are going to start implementing. This is something different. We have many leakages in our house, and I spent 26 years looking at, and planning and deciding if I'm going to, to call an engineer. And when the water is in my uh, is in my waist, I'm going at my waist. I'm going to find the the solutions. But some states are doing their job, and we must recognize that. The national communication must understand how the different states are doing what they are doing, and we must uh, show that to the international community. We are not still, neither the government nor the, the civil society. So speaking about finance, at the territory, WRI, and as a biologist and someone working with natural sciences, we know that diversity is going to save the species. If you have a, a, a single culture, that species is going to, to fade out. And so we have to thrive through, through diversity. And we must have diversity of sources. Pantoja talked about the different um, funds and Marcelo as well about the national funds, the FDO, and we must uh, observe the the national and private investment and also philanthropy. Uh, we have three hundred million dollars coming to the Amazon through the philanthropy for different reasons, and we must appropriate this philanthropy. We must disclose.
no impact. The philanthropy money has much more impact because it's a short money that won't come all the time, like the treasury money. The second point is about the carbon market. We have a project with all the organizations here, including the states, to support the states and the civil society in that state to promote the carbon market in those regions. As Marcelo has mentioned, the natural market, the, the, the market for environmental assets is the new market. And we cannot do that with, without the safeguards with the, the people of the forest. And we have to educate the, the, the managers and the public power because we have to go on. be careful because this honeymoon won't last. If these people don't show what they are going to do in the first 100 days, we could, we could go back. We could have a setback. We could look, look back and maybe it's worse than what we started. So it's very important to have platforms such as the Legal Amazon Consortium, the Public Society, and the the power sector that is working uh, integrated we have to give, our, give uh, uh, we have to hold each other's hand to advance we have we've had good experiences and we should observe the amazon from the spread from the perspective of the amazon people unfortunately in brazil we have different national plans of highways for farming but we don't So maybe, Tavares, the food for thought for you who are serious uh, uh, public servers, what is the strategy of the Amazon that came from the consortium? What can I transform into public policy? What can I bring in terms of new voices of indigenous people, Kilombola people, so that we can uh, uh, can take the experience from the, the Legal Amazon Consortium. This is the DNA of civil society that is supporting you in this implementation. So count on us because the Amazon is very big for us to lose it. And we should fight for this living Amazon for the forest and for the people. I'd like to thank you all, Victor and everyone else. And in reality, My finance, right? The Amazon knows what, what it wants. And we've been discussing and we've been materializing and detailing in, a, in a, an integral way. We had um, long-term plans and different public instruments that eventually ended up being frustrated and we present ourselves as this progressive governance that is in its second year executing, for instance, the bioeconomy program with all the transformations and dyna dynamics that are natural for planning a program. And we, we know, we, uh, you know as well, about states who are working with bioeconomy, with low carbon, There's a lot going on, and, and the public resource is not enough. This is clear to us. On the other hand, we must acknowledge that we are in this climate emergency, but many times we are imprisoned by an, the analysis. So I'm going to discuss the methodology. I'm going to dis discuss the conventions, Article 6, and how to have this regulated market in Brazil, and that end, uh, and that ends up uh, preventing the states to seize the opportunities. 
while the world with less vulnerabilities is uh, accessing much more resources. China, como um dos we grandes... see China... trillion and China is leading. And it's great that China and the countries of all over the country are searching for climate agenda, but the main biodiversity of the planet is out of this market. We continue discussing and financing the recovery and mitigation, the restoration. We are talking about a decade of restoration and the forest is burning, the forest is smaller and smaller, and we are worried about restoring. It's like we are saying, let's burn, and then we decide how we're going to restore. It's a great paradox. need to be worried about what is under pressure but it's very important as well to stream a lot streamline this standing forest the uh, overflow of the consortium is positive in this case when i'm share technology i'm sharing to everyone who's in the consortium it, this consortium financed a series of public policies. We financed joint operations against deforestation, the implementation of monitoring systems. I tell you that the Amazon knows today, and we are participating at, in a COP, Much they need to implement these policies and they count on this partnership that has been very structuring and has been very positive with all of you so thank you very much and the doors are open for us to have these partnerships more and more we count on the engagement and your commitment to be able to transform this economy more and more with this great in this great biome which is the amazon thank you very much and continue following the consortium there's a lot of good things i hope that we can continue following on this agenda with you we have a lot of good things for next week as well very important letters and very important visits like we are planting new seeds and i'm sure that for this next government and for these next uh, subnational governments that start in 2023 these seeds are going to give us good fruit